Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad that you're here today as we are continuing our journey through the book of Genesis. And today we're going to look at a passage in the book of Genesis um, that uh, is a bit famous. It gets talked about outside of, of the Bible, even if you've never read the Bible before. You maybe heard references to the Tower of Babel um, and what, what takes place there. Most people um, kind of recognize that as uh, this this big tower, and that's where languages started. People started speaking all kinds of different languages, and that's 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 just the story. There's nothing nothing wrong with that uh, with remembering it that way. We're going to look at it a little bit here today, and just find out why why was God so upset that they were building this tower, right? Like this, wh- why why did that um, cause him to confuse their languages? All right, so we're going to read here in Genesis chapter eleven. And it said this in verse one, it says this in verse one. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Sinar, uh, Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. So now this is a new technology leap. They're burning bricks, they're hardened bricks, not just sun-dried bricks, but, but burnt bricks, much stronger. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Um, sometimes it's translated as tar, so like this this tar substance for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we dis- be dispersed over the whole face of the earth. All right, so here it tells the two reasons why they're building this tower. First of all, they don't want to be dispersed. They want to come together for for protection. They don't want to be scattered all over the earth. What are they protecting themselves from? Pause on that question. We won't answer that yet. So there, there's something they're afraid of that they don't want to be scattered around. So they're coming together uh, to build this project together to protect themselves. And part of this, this city that they're building, this protection place where they're all together, they can defend themselves. They're also building a giant tower. So getting high elevation. They want to build it um, so that, and it says here, uh, let us make a name for ourselves so that they want to become famous they want to be well known they want to they want to take care of themselves they want to make a name for themselves so they want to protect themselves they want to get all the credit uh they want to get all the all the glory so they're all coming together to build this giant project uh together now what are they afraid of well what is it just what did we just talk about what did we just talk about we talked about a flood a giant earthwide flood that, that God God caused. Now he made his promise. He's never going to let it happen again. But just because God promises something doesn't mean that, <laughs> that people believe it, right? I mean, we can look at that here today. God makes many promises that, that people don't, <laughs> don't believe. So they're, they're still afraid. So what do they do? They come together to protect themselves against who? Against God. And how do they do this? By building a giant tower. They want to get high in elevation. Why? Because they want to escape the floodwaters. It's one way of just kind of looking at this pride. The, the point is uh, pride. The people are think that they don't need God. That we don't need to worship God. We can get the credit ourselves. We don't have to be scared of God. We can bound together. We can bind together and defend ourselves. We don't need him. It says, so the Lord came down to the city at the tower which the children of man had built. It's interesting that the children of man. Uh, remember before it talks about uh, the descendants, uh, the children of man. I mean, it just shows their their childlike behavior here, right? They want to do it themselves. They can do this themselves. They don't need God, but they're just children. Only children think that they don't they don't need others. That they can do it all on their own, right? And the Lord said, "Behold, they are they are one people, and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. God knows they're uh, they're only going to get worse." And nothing that they propose to do now will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was Babel, because there the Lord confused the languages of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. So at that point, remember yesterday we read about all the different descendants of of. Noah and Ham and Shem and Japheth and all these different nations. Um, that was a fast forward, right? That this is where we're going. This is where it's headed. And then what was the catalyzing event for that? The Tower of Babel. 
uh, man coming together saying, we don't need God anymore. We can do this on our own. We, we don't need to give him glory. We don't need to rely on him for protection and provision. We've got this. And God breaks their pride, sends them out, spreads them out, which was what his desire was in the beginning. Just be fruitful and multiply across the earth. But they were all staying together. It, it kind of reminds me of the book of Acts a little bit. He tells the early church there, the very first disciples, Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He gives them the great commission. In Acts 1.8, it says, You'll be my witness both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. But several chapters into to Acts, quite a ways into Acts, where are they at? They're still in Jerusalem. They're still there. And it says a great persecution broke out and caused them to spread out and go into all the world. You see, God has a plan and a purpose. And when we choose not to obey his plan, when we choose not to follow his instruction, it doesn't mean that, that God's plan is ruined. Oh, well, I, I guess we're just not doing that. No, no God, God's plan is going to move forward with our cooperation or without our cooperation, but it's going to happen. This is another example here in, in Genesis chapter 11 of God's plans prevailing because he, is, he has a redemption plan. He, he's rescuing mankind. He wants to draw mankind to himself and he's going to use a special people. And we're going to find out about that a little bit tomorrow. For now, let's go ahead and pause here. Let's go ahead and pause. Let's pray. Let's get our day started and uh, let's have a great, great rest of the day. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that, that you, your plans are the best plans. And God, we, we ask that you just, just forgive us for the times that we we don't believe, that we disobey, that we think that we can just do it our own way and, and ignore what you're telling us, God. Uh, we, we know that there is, is less pain, there's less heartache, and there's less detours if we would just follow you first. So God, as we start today, as we start every day, God, we want to take that first step in your direction because we want to follow you. One step at a time, each day, following you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.